All right. Hi, Ben. Thanks so much for doing this interview. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we start with you just um, introducing yourself and then sharing a little bit about the um, current position that you're in. Sure. Uh, I'm Ben Lowndes. I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, I work in ADR, which is exciting. Um, I work actually for the state of Minnesota uh, at the Department of Transportation. And I'm in a role um, currently um, the official title is Operations Division Liaison, but that doesn't really tell you a lot. Right. Uh, what I do is um, I basically help working teams work better um, within the agency. Uh, we have uh, employees scattered across the state of Minnesota in both our central office in St. Paul, but also in regional offices throughout the state. And um, a lot of our staff have different roles and responsibilities. And so with the distance, uh, as well as the different uh, interests involved in the work. Um, there's potential for conflicts, but there's also potential for um, just process improvements. So my job is really to um, help improve uh, working relationships uh, throughout the agency to hopefully deliver um, our projects and programs in a more efficient and better way for the state. And how did you find this job? Because like, as you said, the title wouldn't necessarily tell you exactly what you would be doing. Um, so how did you come about it? What was your job search like? Definitely. So I um, so I went to law school, and I can tell you more about that in a minute. But uh, my final semester of law school, I did an externship. And it was with the Department of Transportation in their ombudsman's office. And I know that's a, a word that's a, a title that's used in a lot of different ways. Um, and at uh, MnDOT, uh, where I had the externship and also where I currently work. The ombudsman's office um, is essentially a place that helps resolve conflicts between the public at large and the agency. Okay. Um, and they typically have to do most of the time with either uh, road project related work or maintenance, uh, road maintenance related work. Um, and so everything from noise wall issues, people who are for or against noise walls, uh -huh. um, people who have concerns about losing business access um, if a highway project is coming through. Um, those are just some examples that come to mind like immediately. Um, basically, what the ombudsman role did uh, and currently does is um, works in an informal capacity to um, help bridge the gap between the public and the agency to help both sides understand each other better, but both understand the issues better and see if there's any sort of informal way to move things forward. And so I had an externship uh, in that office. And uh, when I graduated, I had uh, the good fortune of having a job uh, opening around the same time. And that's awesome. it was uh, very fortuitous. So um, since then, I've taken on a couple of different roles in the agency. Um, that was in 2014. Um, but, uh, it, it was a, it was a wonderful opportunity to get some experience, but also, uh, be a bridge into my career after school. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a very, I had a very similar situation. I was interning at the ADR department at the local courthouse and a month before I graduated, this was, um, in my undergrad, the person left that oh, I was wow. interning yeah. with and I got the job and I was like, I have my dream job. This is amazing. This yep. is amazing. <laughs> so yeah. those internship externships are fantastic opportunities to network and sometimes they lead to actually the start of your career which is very cool definitely so, definitely how did you find that externship like what was your law school trajectory that led you to that um that externship yeah so i'll take a i'll take a little bit st a step back um maybe a little bit of explanation of how we even got to law school okay. um so i uh when I went to undergrad, I studied English and I loved it. Uh, I have no regrets. I'm super happy I did that. Um, but I was thinking about going into academia, actually, um, when I graduated. And it just so happens that I graduated from undergrad um, right as the recession hit. Uh, um, so more schooling kind of made sense on one, in one aspect for me. Um, but I also was unsure about uh, continuing in academia in the in, in the humanities, if you will, but I didn't know for sure. So I actually got a master's degree in English and I studied rhetoric and composition. And that's just a kind of a fancy way of saying uh, I studied 
communication and a lot of theory. And what I was particularly interested in was um, conflict and communication. And so I absolutely love the theory. I just decided that I didn't want to have to write about that all the time. <laughs> and so uh, I decided to um, continue education um, by going to law school. Now, just a little bit about that. I had no intent to go to law school up until then. Um, I, uh, I actually went, I'm very glad I did. Um, but uh, when I was kind of, like I said, when I was in my master's program and I was like, how can I apply this theory to practice? Um, I just started doing a lot of research and I had no idea that the ADR field existed, but that's how I kind of first came to it and uh, realized a lot of the things that I was studying on a theoretical level was being practiced in the big umbrella field of ADR. And then I saw there's a lot of different ways to learn how to do ADR type things like mediation and facilitation and all of that good stuff. And so, um, and one of those, and as, as you know, is uh, a lot of those are tied to law schools. And so I decided I'm a contextual person that I wanted to kind of learn the big picture of conflict and everything from the informal to the formal ways of people address it. So that's what led me to law school, but I always um, went to law school with the um, openness of not practicing law, although I definitely kept that door open. Um, I did. I did take the bar exam. So yes. Did you go to law school hoping that you would go in the ADR trajectory and kept it open, or did you go to law school saying I'm going to get ADR and then were advised to keep that door open to practice? Um. Yeah. No. I went to school uh, thinking ADR. Um, and I wasn't necessarily advised to keep it open. Um, I just did, like I said, I, when I graduated from undergrad, I graduated in the recession and, and I also was unsure of what the ADR field, I guess, career wise could look like. Yeah. And so I just, um, figured, you know, at least this gives me a, a another career path if I, if needed, but my first, uh, my first first passion and also what my goals were, were all aligned to doing ADR. And so um, from day one of law school, that's kind of what my intent was. So when I got there, I went to, I went to Hamlin uh, in St. Paul. That's what brought me to Minnesota. Top ADR uh, school. <laughs> yeah. And so I, uh, I went there and I loved it. Um, and I, uh, so first year of law school, um, there was no uh, opportunity, you know, to pick classes. So what I did was I got involved in the ADR student organization right away. And I also got connected to the ADR faculty and specifically Sharon Press, um, who is a, a great mentor of mine. And uh, I know I know for you as well. Um, <laughs> and so she definitely took me under her wing and provided a lot of support and like especially back then at the time i i was so new to this field and i didn't even know really what it was all about so kind of got the crash course from her but um really the first uh dip in the, my toe in the water was doing a peer mediate teaching students peer mediation at a high school so uh like i said i couldn't uh choose my classes my first year of law school but i i learned it actually on the fly teaching high schoolers how to mediate. So that's how I kind of came to it. And then, and then uh, right away at when I could start picking classes, you know, I started taking ADR courses and, and getting involved that way. It's so cool. Um, so much that we could talk about and I have to try <laughs> to keep this short. So, uh, <laughs> Cause I also, the part of me was in a, a taking law students and helping them teach peer mediation um, and conflict resolution in high school. So this is just really crazy. And yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, okay, so you're at Hamline. You're, um, you knew this is what you wanted to do. You're seeking out these opportunities, even as a 1L. Mm -hmm. Once you do get to start choosing classes, you take the ADR classes. Um, talk a little bit about, until you got that externship, what what either what advice you got or what opportunities you were trying to seek out as a 2L and 3L. Yeah, definitely. So um, first of all, the advice I was seeking and I received um, 
was just how to how to gain experience because what I recognized is you know you can study in the classroom you can do all of the uh, well and as you know uh, ADR classes often are practice based classes which is a lot of fun um, but how do you how do you gain uh, experience outside the classroom so I um, received that advice to to look into opportunities even if it's volunteering mm -hmm. and so yes doing the peer mediation was one way but I also got involved uh, the summer between my first and second year of school as a volunteer at a community mediation program mm. and that really helped me just contextualize kind of how and it really was the first uh, opportunity for me to I guess it wasn't the first opportunity but it was the first time I really it really crystallized for me um, how that theory that I was studying before law school really is applied in day-to-day -day life. And, and so that was really exciting. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I'm still involved with that organization today too. So um, I'm on the board of directors there, which I'm really proud to, proud to say. But the uh, learning about community mediation, but then um, in school, uh, taking those classes, uh, and then taking advantage of doing competitions. I did um, uh, a mediation representation competition and I also did a negotiation competition and both were super valuable to develop skills, get good feedback um, and, uh, and actually network too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, absolutely. Uh, and then I just remembered, I also did a clinic. That was another thing that was important before uh, the externship. Um, I did a mediation clinic um, where I was mediating in uh, a conciliation court setting. Um, and that was probably the most nerve wracking because I was, uh, I, that was right away my second year of law school after I had mediation under my belt. And uh, it was a good crash course. <laughs> Just got to get in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you knew from the beginning, this is something that you wanted to explore. You took advantage of every opportunity from, uh, curricular, co-curricular, extracurricular, yeah. <laughs> everything. Um, 3L year, you're in the externship and a job sort of just opens um, before you graduate. Um, were you nervous about taking that job and not practicing? No, I wasn't nervous about not practicing. Um, I was confident that this was an opportunity to get experience in ADR. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I, I would actually say what I was more nervous about wasn't uh, was was not not practicing, but I was more nervous about not quote unquote mediating. Um, yeah. So I wasn't mediating in my job, and I still don't mediate in my job. Actually, I use a lot of the same skill sets. I use I do a lot of facilitation, um, but and I think it was because at the time, you know, especially you know as you're I kind of alluded to, I, you know, I took the courses, I did the clinic, I, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I think about it as a process. And what I really realized is that it's more about a skill set. Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, I kind of became a little, uh, so I wasn't worried about not practicing law. I was more worried about losing that process skill set. Mm -hmm. But um, what I realized is that uh, there's so many different ways to practice the skills of ADR. And um, that really actually kind of opened up a broader door to kind of show how how to actually make your way in this career. Yeah, that's something that I've heard. Um, Heather Culp talks about that a lot. Like you have to be somewhat entrepreneurial in your mindset about how you approach a career in ADR. That it's not the job title that um, is necessarily the thing. It's the skill set. It's the approach. It's the mindset. Um, it's the impact. Uh, that you're having and you've got all of that yeah definitely what advice would you give to someone um that might be graduating or uh, soon to graduate uh, in um, law school graduate school or just thinking about starting a career in adr so my first piece of advice would be to uh to tr to take advantage of as many opportunities as you can while you have the flexibility to do so um, so if you're in school, um, not everybody has all the, I mean, obviously you're studying, you're, you're getting ready for all, all your exams and things like that. Some people are working at the same time. Um, I totally get that. But if there's opportunities to just gain skills and practice those skills, 
um, take advantage of those because then you're able to, um, you're kind of talking about that entrepreneurial spirit. You're, be, you're, you're able to label those skills and, and, and acknowledge that you have a skill set. Um, and so I think, that's, I think that's really important. And I also think that uh, taking advantage of opportunities like that also uh, expands your um, kind of your circles in ADR. And what I've really come to appreciate about this field is how welcoming it is and people want others to succeed in it. And uh, so the more opportunities you take advantage of, hopefully you meet more and more people. Um, so that would be my first piece of advice and the reasoning behind it. And the second piece of advice is to, to be patient and trust, trust, uh, trust your trajectory. Um, I admit my, I, you know, you can watch this video and, and think, wow, like everything kind of just lined up and it's in the time at the time, it, I didn't know it was going to happen that way. And so, um, just trusting that, you know, by taking it, advantage of those opportunities it'll lead you to another opportunity to another opportunity and it might not be the end opportunity you want but it's going to continue to propel you forward so that'd be my other piece of advice i think that's beautiful and i think for especially for law students the career trajectory that they're taught is there's the goal and this, just get on this treadmill and you'll get there or you're likely to get there mm -hmm. um and that is not at all our experience, <laughs> but we got somewhere. And yeah. I'm hearing you talk about um, pride and community and being able to use that skill set that you enjoy and the context and contextualizing all the theory that you spent years studying. Yes, yeah. And actually, another thing I would I would recommend is uh, is to really um build good solid relationships and have mentors in the field um i was very fortunate that um i mentioned sharon took me under her wing others did as well um and th that is truly priceless and um obviously in the practical sense um i learned uh very practical things through those through those relationships but but more than that you know i have I, I continue to have those strong relationships in the field because um, because people are willing to mentor and uh, now now they're more than mentors, you know, they're friends. So I think that's something that um, it takes a little bit of courage. Um, I had to, I remember, uh, so when I first got to Hamlin, Sharon was the director of the Dispute Resolution Institute. She still is actually um, at Mitchell Hamlin. And I was kind of intimidated by that, but I just said, you know, I'm one of those people who want to do this, so I need to talk to her. And I kind of had to just uh, realize that who better to talk to than somebody who's in the field or and has experience in the field. So um, I highly recommend uh, people who are especially in a, any sort of program or thinking about getting into ADR um, is to find, seek people out who are in the field and um, some people might be um, just, you know, just a kind of a quick mentoring uh, relationship, kind of, you know, that copy and um, what do you call those informational interview type things. But some some are much deeper than that. And I, I recommend uh, seeking those out and not being too uh, concerned about, uh, I guess, being nervous about that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think so. Courage is important um, about so many of the decisions that we have to make in ADR. Um, but so reaching out to some of those folks and the courage to be patient, uh, your your other piece of advice um, means a lot. Well, um, is there anything else that you would like to share with folks about your ADR's first career story? Hmm. Um, well, we kind of touched on it, but I think it's something that uh, is worth saying again, and it's it's be creative. Um, think of think of ADR as a skill set that can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, what I'm finding today, more than even when I first started, and it's not been that long ago, but is that uh, more and more um, places 
uh, institutions are looking for people with ADR skill sets, as well as um, there's opportunities for people to create their own, go on your own opportunities. And maybe it's not just as a professional mediator, it might be also doing a variety of things like um, uh, you're facilitating or you're convening public conversations or um, you're helping out in public processes, uh, you know, all sorts of things like that. So I think, I think being creative and being flexible in the skill set is, is something that I think is important for folks to know. That, that makes a lot of sense. You have to see the opportunities that are out there. They don't necessarily uh, stare us in the face as mediator job. <laughs> right, right. Right on, right on. Um, well, I think we'll go ahead and, and leave it there. Ben, I really appreciate you sharing this information. And um, it's really just a, a pleasure to hear about uh, how you developed your career and taking advantage of those um, opportunities, being courageous to go talk to the people that you knew um, were already doing it, um, and the patience to see what will happen and uh, how much has already happened in the four years since you graduated. It's very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, All right. Thank you. This thank is a great opportunity. So yeah, right. thank you. Thank you.